Hi guys, this is Miss Gole and welcome to the first lesson of the last module of the year. Today's lesson will be on solving for unknown angles using equations. Your outcomes for today's lesson are students solve for unknown angles in word problems and in diagrams involving complementary and supplementary angles. Students solve for unknown angles in word problems and in diagrams involving all learned angle facts. As you're taking notes, be sure to write down any questions you have or topics you did not understand at the end of your notes in the section labeled questions to ask in class slash I didn't understand. And you will have the opportunity to address these at the beginning of the next class. So the first thing we need to do is to review some of the angle relationships that we've already talked about this year. And the first angle relationship is adjacent angles. And you can tell from this diagram here that we have angle A and angle B. And when you put them together, because they're next to each other, we have them form angle C. So we could come to the conclusion that angle A plus angle B is equal to angle C. Our second angle relationship is vertical angles. And vertical angles are created when two lines intersect and the angles that are formed, we look at the angles that are directly across from each other. So we have angle A and angle B are actually equal in measure. So we have angle A is equal to angle B. So we'll be using that angle relationship. Our next angle relationship is supplementary angles. Supplementary angles are formed when two angles come together to form a line. And we know that a line or a straight angle has a degree measure of 180. So you guys can see here, we have angle A and angle B and they come together to form a straight line. And so we can come to the conclusion that angle A plus angle B is equal to 180 degrees. And a specific example of that would be 120 degree angle plus 60 degrees. They come together to form a straight line of 180 degrees. Likewise, we have complementary angles, which basically form perpendicular lines, which is 90 degrees. So we have two adjacent angles creating a 90 degree angle. Here we have 30 degrees and 60 degrees, and when they get put together, they form 90 degrees. Um, to generalize this, if we had angle A, and angle B, they would add together to get 90 degrees. And finally, our last angle relationship that we want to look at is angles at a point. And so you can see from our diagram here that we have angle A, angle B, and angle C, and they all form um, at the center A, capital A. And you can see the shape that they take is basically a circle, and that's what really tells you that they form an angle total of 360 degrees. So we can conclude angle A plus angle B plus angle C is equal to 360 degrees. So we are going to use these angle relationships to basically come up with equations for um, uh, lots of different types of problems. So let's take a look at our first example. Example one says, the measure of two supplementary angles are in the ratio of two to three, find the two angles. So the first thing I notice here is the word supplementary, and I like to make little notes for myself, so I know that supplementary means they add up to equal 180 degrees. And the second thing I notice is they're in the ratio of two to three. And right away, I like to note to myself that this really means 2x to 3x, because basically they're multiplied by a scale factor. And so you can create any number of relationships there that are in the ratio of 2 to 3. If I wanted to get a visual of this, we know they're supplementary, so they form a straight line. So I would create two angles that form a straight line. The smaller one would obviously be my 2x, and my larger would be 3x. So from here, you can create the equation. 2x plus 3x would be equal to 180 degrees. Now, we've done a lot of work this year with solving equations, so we know here that the first thing we're going to do is combine like terms. So 2x plus 3x is going to give me 5x. And then I'm going to divide by 5 on both sides. 5 divided by 5 cancels and becomes 1, and 1 times x is x. And that gives me 36 degrees over here. 
Now, a common mistake that people make is that they don't actually answer the question. They leave it at solving for x. However, if you notice, this question actually says, find the two angles. So I'm not just trying to find x, I'm actually trying to find 2x and 3x. So I need to substitute um, 36 in for x. So 2 times 36 is going to give me 72 degrees. And 3 times 36 is going to give me 108 degrees. And so my final answer, this is a word problem, so I want to give a worded answer. The two angles are 72 degrees and 108 degrees. And so that's my final answer. All right, let's take a look at example two. Example two says, in a pair of complementary angles, the measure of the larger angle is three times that of the smaller angle. Find the measurements of the two angles. Again, I'm gonna make a little note to myself that complementary means they add up to equal 90 degrees. So if I wanted to get an idea of what this looks like, I'm gonna start by drawing a right angle. Put that little uh, square there to note that that is a right angle, that it's 90 degrees. And I wanna split this up and you'll notice here that they've described two different angles. We have a larger angle and a smaller angle. Now, the way they stated this, it says the larger angle is three times that of the smaller. So they're describing the smaller angle, um, or rather they're describing the larger angle in terms of the smaller. So that tells me that I wanna let X equal the smaller angle. Now, once I've done that, you can start to just make little notes to yourself above it and interpret. So the larger angle is, which means equals, three times, so three multiplied by that of the smaller angle. So we just define that to be x. So that gives me three x equals the larger angle. Okay, so that tells me I can fill in x for my smaller angle in my diagram and three x for the larger angle in my diagram. So just like the previous question, I use my diagram to set up my equation and I can see that when we put the two angles together, x plus 3x is going to give us 90 degrees. Draw my wall, combine like terms, 1x plus 3x gives me 4x equals 90. And then I'm going to divide by four. Okay, so four divided by four gives me one and one times x is x. 90 divided by four is going to leave us with 22.5 degrees. Now again, they're not just asking us to find x. We're asked to find the measurement of the two angles. So I need to plug in 22.5 in for 3x because really I only found the smaller angle at this point. So 3x is going to be 3 times 22.5, giving us 67.5 degrees. And so the two angles are 22.5 degrees and 67.5 degrees. And that completes example two. All right, let's take a look at our last example, example three. Two lines meet at a point. Set up and solve an equation to find the value of x. Find the measurement of one of the vertical angles. Now, what was nice about this is they actually told us the relationship in the words. They said, vertical angles. So here you can see we have the two lines that cross to create these two angles. And those are our vertical angles. And from our angle relationships, we know that vertical angles are equal to each other. So that is the equation I'm gonna set up. 3x is equal to x plus 30. Now this equation is very different from what we've seen all year long. It's different because there are x's on both sides of the equation. We've never seen this before. So when we first started learning about solving equations, we used bar modeling to help us understand um, how to solve equations. So why don't we actually go back to bar modeling so we can get an idea of what's going on here. 
So I'm going to start by representing 3x. So let's take a bar, divide it into three parts, and each one of those would represent an x. Now, 3x is equal to x plus 30, so I'm going to create another bar that's the same size. And I know it has an x, so I'm going to create the first part of the bar is the same size as the other x. The rest of the bar has a value of 30. So in this bar, I know that they're the same size. So if I were to take out these x's, which are also the same size because they're both x, then my bar would still be equal to each other. So why don't we simplify this by taking away an x from both of the bars. So they'll still have the same value. You can see that these two bars are still the same size. So what I'm left with is a simplified equation, which would be 2x is equal to 30. Now, let's look at what this would look like algebraically. So I'm going to split this up here. We'll draw a little squiggle line here. And we start off with our 3x plus, sorry, 3x is equal to x plus 30. So when we have variables on both sides, basically what you want to do is you still follow the idea of take care of distributive first, and then you're going to combine like terms. Then you take care of variables on both sides. So what we do is we identify which one is the smaller variable. So I have three x's here and only one x here. So this one is going to be my smaller variable. So I'm going to get rid of x. Now you'll notice over here what we did to get rid of x was we literally took it away. That's what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to subtract an x from this side. But for the sake of balancing our equation here, we would need to do the same thing to the other side. So I'm going to take away an x over here as well, leaving us with 2x equals 30. Now, if this were a negative x, I would want to add x's to both sides to balance that out and get rid of one of the x's on one of the sides. Now notice I'm back to where I started over here, so we can go ahead and solve this equation. So I have multiply by 2, so I'm going to divide both sides by 2. Cancels gives me x equals 15. Now the question states that they want me to find the measurement of one of the vertical angles. They don't want me to find both because they're equal to each other, so that would be redundant. So um, if I'm going to find this, it's really up to you. You have a choice as to whether you want to plug it into here or into here. Whatever makes more sense to you or whatever is easiest for you is absolutely fine. I like just multiplying it by 3. That seems easy to me. So I'm just going to do 3 times 15 gives us a measure of 45 degrees. So each of the vertical angles measures 45 degrees. And that completes example three. In this lesson, we reviewed angle relationships, specifically angle, sorry, vertical angles are equal, supplementary angles add up to 180 degrees, complementary angles add up to 90 degrees, and angles that form complete circles add up to 360 degrees. Our process for solving for unknown angles involved determining the angle relationship, creating an equation to solve for the unknown using the relationship, and then solving the equation. We learned that if there are variables on both sides, you want to get rid of the smaller variable only after you have done distributive and combining like terms by adding or subtracting the variable from both sides. And then you re repeat steps one through three if there are unknown variables. Have a great night.